Hey guys, Vladimir here, and since Valentine's Day is right around the corner, I decided I would do a video on designing and 3D printing your own flowers. So the inspiration for these came uh, from Peter Sum's Thingiverse page, where he has an interesting approach here. Uh, usually with 3D printing, we're relying on the bottom layers to support the top layers, so we always have to keep that in mind when we're designing and uh, when we're printing, if we haven't met this objective, we're usually relying on supports. Well, what Peterson does is he actually uses this limitation to his advantage. And for the petals of these flowers, he's just allowing the filament to just kind of uh, freely flow from thin air and just kind of fall into place where it does this sort of uh, drooping and looping motion. Uh, hence the term drew loops as he uh, coined it for this type of printing. So I decided I would give this a shot. Um, it's, it's actually a very neat approach because it, you end up getting this sort of randomness and uh, more organic shape for these flowers where each flower looks a little bit different from the other. Um, and it represents nature a little more. You know, you're not designing these perfect flowers. Um, but, you know, they're more sort of organic and, and uh, random in shape. Um, so we'll jump into fusion um, and I'll show you guys my approach on that. Um, to attach the stem to these, I ha did have this 3D printing pen around, so I thought I would give it a shot and, and try using this to weld it. So what I did first was I went ahead and um, just sort of melted the center of the flower and then I stuck the stem in um, and that kind of um, melted into place. And then I went ahead um, and extruded the filament around uh, the stem to uh, to give it a stronger bond and it actually it turned out um, pretty good the, the, the bond was uh, was pretty strong on this um, so um, I want to get um, some input from you guys there's kind of been two approaches to these videos um, in some of them I do when I jump into Fusion 360 uh, I do this sort of speed build where I just kind of go really quick through my general approach of how I tackle the design and then for others, I do go into sort of very step-by-step -step, uh, instructions on, on how to do the design. Um, I decided for this one to go, um, go ahead and do a step-by-step -step, tutorial. But let me know what you guys prefer. Do you prefer the ones where I just kind of generalize and, and just go through what the, um, you know, the general approach was in, in my modeling? Or do you like the, the longer sort of step-by-step -step videos? Uh, let me know in the comments below because I'm trying to determine which way to go about uh, these tutorials. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump into Fusion. All right, I got my cup of coffee here in my favorite robot guitar mug and I'm ready to begin. So let's go ahead and start with a sketch. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose our bottom plane here. Uh, grab a center diameter circle and we'll give it a diameter of 20 millimeters. A stop sketch and we'll go ahead and extrude this 12 millimeters and then we'll apply a fillet of 10 millimeters on the top edge. Uh, we'll go ahead and create another sketch. We're going to choose a plane perpendicular to the one we just created. So this XY plane here looks good. And for this, all we're going to do is just create a line from the center out uh, and we'll give that a distance of 35 millimeters and we'll click on step sketch. Next, we'll take that line we just created and uh, create a pipe out of it. So we're going to go to uh, create pipe, choose our line, uh, make sure we have this set to square and our section size is going to be 0 0.8 millimeters and we're going to go from cut to new body and click OK. Now the reason I chose 0 0.8 millimeters is because I'm going to be working with a um, or I'm going to be printing with a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle and I want this to extrude on the way there and on the way back so that's why 0 0.8. Um, Next, um, I'm going to want to extrude this up because I plan to print this at a layer height of 0 0.3 millimeters. The pipe command only allows me to choose a square setting. So this is going to be 0 0.8 by 0 0.8. Um, so I'm going to hit E for extrude, uh, grab that bottom uh, plane and um, go ahead and drag this up and I'm going to give it a negative uh, 0.5 millimeter extrusion there. I'm going to change uh, this bottom part here objects to cut I don't want it to cut the center body so I'm gonna um, go ahead and uncheck body one there and click OK and notice it just cuts um, that body okay next we're gonna go ahead and take this pipe we just created and pattern that so let's go to create 
pattern, rectangular pattern, choose our body, uh, make sure our pattern type is set to bodies, um, objects we've already selected, uh, the direction, we're going to want to go up, so I'm going to select this Y axis here, and we'll start dragging this up, and notice, because um, you have two sections here, you know, one in the up down direction, and this one is a side to side direction, so but sometimes you can't tell which is which. So if I start dragging this up, you'll see that this number is changing. So that's what we're going to want to modify. So we'll set this um, from extent to spacing. And I know I want these to be uh, 0 0.8 millimeters apart. So I'm just going to enter that in. And then I can just um, go ahead and change the quantity. So you can do that here or here. Um, and we'll go ahead and make this, give this, uh, make 10 of these. Um, and I'm going to click OK. So now I've got 10 petals and I want it to have this sort of tapered effect as it goes up. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a sketch again in that center plane. And I'm going to do this by creating uh, an arc. So let's go to the sketch arc, uh, three point arc. And I'm going to just draw an arc here. Um, give it sort of a bulge like this. And that I want that bottom paddle to stay intact, so I'm going to leave um, that there, and so it's kind of splits those first two pedals. Um, the second part, I'm just going to drag this, um, let's say about right here. You know, I know that these grid spacings are um, each 10 millimeters apart, so I'm just going to go you know, like a little bit over 10, and then I'm going to just connect this. Um, by drawing a line and just to get this profile and then we'll go ahead and stop sketch we'll take this profile and extrude this uh, because that's in that in that center plane I'm gonna need to extrude this in both directions so we're gonna go from one side to symmetric I'm gonna just go ahead and extrude that out uh, and click OK and keep it in as a cut um, okay, I see a problem. I didn't cut this guy. I thought I had it right, but maybe I didn't. So I'm going to just modify this to bring it down so it cuts that second pedal. Um, so stop sketch. All right, that's good. I've verified that length, 35. Okay. So next, what I'm going to do is I want to treat all these pedals here as one body. Um, so let's go ahead and um, if I toggle body one, that's my center. So, you know, to distinguish that, let's go ahead and give that a name. Let's call that center. Um, I'm going to toggle that off and I have all these separate bodies. So there's no way to join them because they're not connected in any way. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch. I'm going to, again, choose that center plane there and R for rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle from the... Um, center there to we'll go to the top of this pedal and the dimension doesn't matter much we just want a little sort of rectangle there to extrude out so that we can connect these um, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna toggle this for a second and we'll click on stop sketch E for extrude we'll grab this out and then toggle bodies um, back in um, let's view it from this angle so I don't want to go past the pedals, just enough that I have something that I can use to join them all together. So from cut, I'm going to go to new body, um, and then I'm going to click OK. But watch what happens. So right now I have uh, body 2 through body 11. Once I choose, um, I'm sorry, I don't want to choose new body, I want to choose join. Once I choose join, everything will just go to one body. So this is all now one body. All right, next I want to uh, create a copy and shift it up. So to do that, I'm just going to go to body two, click on move slash copy, and we're going to check um, this option here where it says create copy. Make sure this is set to bodies. Uh, we're going to keep it at uh, translate here as move type, and I can start moving this up, and you can see a copy is being moved up. Now, the original spacing, I made that at 0 0.8, and I want this to be right in between that, so I'm going to do 0 0.4, and there you go. So now we have these two separate uh, bodies uh, plus our center. Okay, so I'll toggle everything on, and you should have something that looks like this. 
Next, we'll create a circular pattern. So I'm going to navigate here to the top view. Uh, go to Create Pattern, Circular Pattern. And we'll start with our uh, first body of petals here. So uh, we'll choose this one, um, Pattern Type, Set to Bodies. And our axis, we're going to choose. Uh, so let's select it first, and we'll choose our uh, circle perimeter. And we're going to give this a quantity of 15. Click OK. And you should have this. OK, next, um, also notice you've got all these bodies here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the same thing with our second set of petals. But before we do that, we're going to rotate it. So right click, we're going to go to move um, bodies as the move object. Uh, we have our selection already. We're going to change this from translate to rotate. And we'll go ahead and choose our axis here as our circle. And you can see I can start moving this. Now the angle I want to give it. Um, to figure that out, well, we can actually just do a little math here. Um, I know that I took uh, 15 of these and rotated it around 360 degrees. So if I just take 360 divided by 15, um, I get that the angle between each of these petals is uh, 24 degrees. And I want to put this right in the middle of that. So, um, you know, just take half of that, which will give me the 12 degrees. So let's go ahead and make this negative 12. And that creates that body right in the middle. Uh, easier way actually I could have done this is I could have just gone to inspect and shows this angle here between these two objects and that would have told me that they were 24 degrees apart. Okay, now we're going to take this and make a circular pattern of that. So um, we'll go to create pattern, circular pattern, choose that body. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Let's choose our axis here as the circle and quantity 15 again and click OK. And now you should have this. Okay, now that we have uh, all these different bodies here, we're going to go ahead and join it into one body. So let's go ahead and choose modify, combine, choose our center and then uh, or choose our center as our target body and then for our tool bodies we're going to click on the second body here in our browser scroll all the way down hold shift and choose that last body they're all going to be highlighted um, and then go ahead and click ok and make sure you choose uh, join as operation type and that'll go ahead and combine them all so you see we went from a whole bunch of bodies into just uh, one body uh, all named center here so okay next we're gonna print this upside down so what I want to do is just slice a little bit off of the top here so to do that I'll go to construct offset plane I'll choose this bottom plane here uh, move this up and I just want to cut off a little bit so the top is about 11.97 um, let's do 11 actually we're gonna have to do a negative 11.5 that looks good uh, and then we'll just go ahead and do a modify uh, split body choose our body choose our splitting tool as the plane we just created click OK and now we'll have two separate bodies here with one of them being that little piece we don't need um, so I'm just gonna right click and choose remove I'm gonna untoggle construction uh, untoggle sketches and here is our finished flower. It doesn't look much like a flower, but it'll print like one. So um, to get this ready for printing, uh, let's go ahead or to send it to our printer. I'm going to go ahead and choose Make 3D Print. Choose our body. I'm going to use Simplify 3D here. So I have that uh, as under Custom, and I'm going to click OK. And that's going to go ahead and bring this up to Simplify 3D. Now, the way I had that orientated, um, you know, it's not the way I'm going to want to print it. So with Simplify 3D, we can just go into Edit, uh, Place Surface on Bed. And I want this flat surface here to be uh, resting on the bed. So I'm just going to click on that, and that will automatically um, turn it. So I'm going to now go ahead and just go to uh, Center and Align Models. That will align it for me. As far as my process, there's a few things I'm going to tweak here. 
I'm going to change uh, layer height from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Uh, and then I'm going to go into, uh, wait, first let's do check and fill. I'm going to keep that at 10%. That's fine. Um, then I'm going to go into cooling. And notice here, um, I've got that the fan is off for the first layer and then it's on at 60% uh, for the second layer and so on. Uh, what I want to do is I want to turn that fan back off once I start printing the petals. Because uh, if you don't do that, it's just going to end up blowing those petals around and the flower is just not going to come out right. So in order to do that, I need to figure out at what layer am I going to start printing the petals. So there's a few ways to do that. I'm just going to go back into Fusion and we'll go ahead and inspect um, to measure from this bottom plane here to the top of our first petal. And that's going to give me a distance of 3.9 millimeters. So back to Simplify 3D. Um, what I can do is just, let's figure that out. So 3.9 millimeters and I'm printing at 0.3 millimeter height. So that's going to be layer 13 that that petal is going to start printing. So what I'm going to do is at a set point, um, make this layer 13 and change that fan speed back down to zero. So layer one is zero. This should be layer two. It goes to 60 and then layer 13 it's going to go back down to zero. So once I have that, I'm going to click OK. And next I'm just ready to print. So I'm going to prepare to print, choose my process, click OK. And save this to my SD card and I'll be good to go. Um, why don't we do a quick little um, simulation here just to kind of take a look at how that the petals look when they start printing. So once we get, um, here we go, at this point, this is where the petals are going to start printing. And you can see here it shows them straight out. They're obviously not going to stay that way. What happens is they'll just kind of fall into place and you get this nice loop uh, that goes back and forth. So, all right. Let me know what you guys think. There's probably a whole bunch of different approaches you can take here to get a similar result. Uh, so I'm curious to hear if you would have uh, approached this at a you know a different angle or use a different method to get that similar Drew Loops effect. Um, so just let me know in the comments below. Um, also, if you're interested in learning more on using Fusion 360 for uh, designing, uh, check out my course. I'm going to leave a link below, Designing for 3D Printing with Fusion 360. Um, check it out. It's getting uh, really good reviews. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.